me. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Erin Bean, and a special Google Hangout this week. Um, I'm with uh, Fairleigh Dickinson's Sage Doval. Sorry, Sage. I might have got it. Got it. Already. Um, but we're previewing this weekend's Women's Soccer Championship. It will be in Loretto, Pennsylvania, hosted by St. Francis U. And Fairleigh Dickinson will take on the LIU Blackbirds. It'll be the second game of the day. Hopefully at 2.30. We might squeeze in a little bit earlier. So how are you feeling today, Sage? Feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. I've been waiting for four years for this, so I'm ready to to take Pennsylvania and take it. Yeah, take it by storm. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so Fairly Dickinson uh, started the preseason poll, ranked eighth out of ninth, second yep. to the bottom. Yeah. The last three years, they've you know kind of had a couple struggled a little bit. Yeah. Have really emerged as the Cinderella story. You yeah. guys were fighting for the championship on Sunday against yeah. St. Francis. Yeah. It was a great game. It was pretty exciting to watch on uh, NEC front row. Mm -hmm. So now you're going into the tournament. It's going to be your guys' first tournament. Are there nerves over there? Or is it more just excitement? Um, I feel like it's, feel like it's excitement. Um, I don't see too much nerves out of them. If they have it, then they're doing well with keeping them calm, keeping themselves calm, the, keeping each other calm and everything. Um, but I feel like it's excitement. I feel like we are are kind of like finally, you know, like we know the history of the program. Um, a couple of us have dealt with everything in the past, and we're definitely ready to go. And then I think we're just ready to make a new name for FDU, you know, just, you know, add ourselves as contenders rather than the, than the team that you kind of get an easy three points from and everything during conference play. So, so yeah. what would you say the turning point has been for the team? I mean, is it was it your coach coming in? He started last year uh, back in January. Was it did he kind of bring a breath of fresh air into the program? It, he's really mm -hmm. lifted you guys to his like a staple in the conference. Yeah, yeah. I think um, well, our sophomore class was great. We lost a huge. There was a year where we lost a huge amount of uh, seniors. So bringing in those numbers from our sophomore class was excellent. And I think that that's what established our talent and what coach Rick did is he just brought it out of us um, and it's funny that we actually just had to talk a team talk about it when we first met him during his interview for the position um, we were asking him like how are you gonna help us how are you gonna help us and he uh, n until now just you know told us that it's it's nothing that he could teach us necessarily that we didn't know it was just bringing it out from within kind of thing so he kind of just, you know, he did really well, and I think this is one of our, our, uh, our what we needed the most when he, when we were first uh, entering conference play was getting our, our technique done. You know, simple passing, simple first touches. You know, controlling the ball in our possession and everything, and just getting our heads up and playing the ball to our advantage. And I think he really did well with getting our technique to be a lot more uh, consistent. And then he just, you know, he just made us believe in ourselves. Like he, he just kept us going. He, you know, he would alter things as they needed to be done to kind of get our, get our rhythm going with everything, such as, you know, establishing what, how the lineup will be. We've gone through a couple different formations and everything, and um, he's not afraid to try something new. And um, he believes in us to, you know, do the best we can with whatever advice or whatever tactical uh, advice he gives us and whatnot. So I think he just believed in us, which is something we really needed. Yeah. So um, this season, you guys have not dropped a conference game up until this past Saturday. You finished four, one, and three. Um, a lot of that had to do with you and the goal. You had eight season shutouts. Yeah. I mean, an absolute huge accomplishment. But at what point during conference play did you guys realize this is something special? You guys are really going to kind of do something that no Fairleigh Dickinson team has done since yeah. I think it was 2005. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, something like that. 2005 or even 2004, I think. Um, but, you know, I'm not really sure when it kind of clicked that we had something that wasn't just luck or, you know, we actually had talent, we had skill. And I think one of um, that moment came, uh, I think it really started to kind of hit us actually in the season opener against Mount um, when we won. You know, we were on our home field. We've never really won a conference opener. We've maybe won a game or two in conference, but never like our opener or anything. And we were actually scoring goals. Um, so it was actually, you know, it wasn't like we're just getting one goal, one goal in. Or a lot of times in past seasons, we'd only let one goal in. So we're always there. 
but now we weren't just at the point of competition, we were actually surpassing it and we were making a, you know, making progress in and getting more than one goal and keeping the game away from the other team. And I think at that point is when we kind of started to figure out that we have a solid team. And then I think um, it was either, I'm trying to think, it was LIU or around Bryant and LIU were another key games for us that we realized that um, we could take it on because LIU has always been a good, a big contender for us. Um, so we've always wanted to, you know, they've always been on our radar and we've always kind of looked uh, as them to be a key game to, to take. And this year we finally took it. And then Bryant, we had one of our most consistent games. We had a clean shutout, which I obviously enjoy, but we also <laughs> got a solid score. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a 1-0 game. It was 3-0. So we got our offense going and we got them moving and working off each other so well. Um, the goals were beautiful. And then, you know, our back line and, and our uh, midfield and our defensive mids just kept the solid, you know, didn't let them really penetrate. You know, in that game I didn't even make superb saves. You know, I was just there when I needed. So I feel like that's when we realized we were a solid team is when um, we're getting those good scores, we're holding off any attempts, and then I'm just there to clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up, you know, just as a safe a safety net. Like you said, you are the safety net, and you really, you know, you've had four conference clean sheets, and mm -hmm. you really, you know, had a great season. But how, when you see your team up there, and, you know, you see mm -hmm. Esther and Amanda, and you see them really going after it, is it hard to maintain concentration back there? Because, like you said, you, your defense has done outstanding and really limited the number of shots that you've even had to mm -hmm. face. What's it like to, uh, to stay mentally focused? Um, that's a, it's a difficult task. It is, it is, but I feel, um you kind of just, you just pay attention, you know, the soccer that they're playing is so, uh, so clean sometimes, so beautiful that you can't look away, you know, like even if you got distracted, you just, you, you kind of just focus, I don't really know if there's a, um, it's just practice, I guess, uh, because it is definitely something you have to experience, um, it is hard, especially, I remember just coming, when I would have injury or something coming back, it was really hard to focus for that, 90 minutes, but I just think as the season came and as the games went on and on, you know, I just got that mental, I guess, it's almost like mental training back, and um, it's fun to watch them play up top, and, and it's exciting, so it's not too hard now to focus on them, so, you know, it's just, I watch and I see whenever there's a ball loose or something, you know, I'm just ready to go. I do constantly, you know, I kind of keep little little short phrases in my head to keep myself focused, you know, just reminding myself what I need to do, um, what, whether the ball's in front, way up top, in the midfield, or, in, um, or right in front of me in my defensive line. You know, I just keep, you know, small, sharp reminders, but nothing too crazy where I'm losing focus of the ball or anything. So you talked a little bit about how the LIU game where you guys won 2 nothing at yeah. LIU was kind of a season changer for you. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, that is now who you guys are going to go up against. <laughs> They've had a lot of success the last two years, back-to-back -back, um, defending NEC champions. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think is different about this game, seeing as they have had that experience at the conference, and you guys have just had regular season play? Um, you know, that's actually a good question. Um, <laughs> I feel like maybe they understand the pressure a little bit more because now, you know, it's not, okay, you lose a game, you can look to a next game, like this is a win or lose um, scenario. So I think that maybe they might, the edge they might have is that they know how to handle the pressure. Um, and even with that said, I can't say that our team doesn't even know how to handle the pressure because we have obviously never been put in that situation, but the girls where they've come from have been in those scenarios mm -hmm. where they've been in playoffs and they've been in, uh, championship games so I now it's just how do we handle it together I think it's the only thing that's up in the air but I'm um, even going into this into this game I think we have a slight advantage just because we played on the field and we didn't play in the beginning season we just played on it right so, and their field is very different from the grass field that St. Francis has so I think as long as we you know can remind ourselves to stay calm and you know, I feel like we'll be able to handle that pressure um, together and everything. And then 
I think we'll just use the field and that small bit of advantage we'll have to take it and go with it because um, at this point it's whatever advantage you can get so uh, so just looking at it they have maybe they have a little bit of advantage with pressure but we have advantage with experience recent experience yeah well and, uh, like you said the last time LIU Brooklyn was actually played at Loretto was last year in the championship mm -hmm. game so you guys were just there last weekend, and yeah. let's talk a little bit about the elements and the weather in Loretto. It's not the you know sunshiny state <laughs> no. of Georgia or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold. It's going to be uh, all rainy tomorrow, or I mean on yeah. Thursday, so on practice day. Yeah. So on Friday, you know there might be a little bit wet from leftover mm -hmm. rain, and it's going to be 45 degrees. Yeah. How do you guys play in that type of weather? I mean, you've got we've had a pretty mild fall, so mm -hmm. are you guys prepared for the cold and the mud and the wet? Mm -hmm. and the yeah, I think so because actually when we just played St. Francis, um, the day before was kind of rainy and even a little bit of flurry going. Mm -hmm. So there was a chance that we might have had to move the game just because of the weather. Okay. But, um, so we kind of did experience that weather pattern when we were down there. Um, and then again, it's just... Uh, you know, it's just, we kind of just have to go with it. Um, we are used to the cold. It has been a mild, has been mild fall, but I think most of us are used to the weather um, here in Jersey. I mean, a lot of the freshmen have come from northern states, and we have a couple from Canada who are going to be already ready for the cold weather. Um, so I don't think the cold will, will matter too much. You know, we'll just keep Keep our keep our bodies moving as cliche as that is, and we'll keep uh, <laughs> focus on mental focus. The field was a bit tricky, just because it gets wet, and I think both games this weekend on grass fields are probably snipe myself on a kick or something. So, um, as long as we just stay focused and we don't let that, uh, I guess, hinder ourselves. You know, it yeah. doesn't make us scared to play or anything like that. You know, hit the ground, it's okay. Just get back up and play again. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest element is the fact that it is grass and that it'll be a little bit muddy and that we might have to, you know, change our game a little bit um, to keep a ball to keep the ball moving in our in our direction and in, and for us. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you. Yes. You're from Georgia. How on earth did you get from Georgia to New York? <laughs> the question everyone always asks me. Um, well, my goalkeeper trainer from Georgia actually was the goalkeeper here, the, and she graduated the year before I came in. And I don't know how she found Fairleigh Dickinson, but she told me about it. Okay. And so I contacted um, the coaching staff who was there at the time. And I came for the camp, and um, my trainer, Megan, actually just, you know, she talked me up and everything, and and she's good at not, you know, she didn't over-inflate my talent or anything like that. She told her how it was, and she believed in me, and they saw me play in the camp, and it just kind of fell into place, I guess. You know, it just, it was the smoothest recruiting process. I mean, with other schools where I was being recruited at, it was kind of hard um, it just didn't feel right, as uh, I know everybody says you got to feel how how the school <laughs> is to you, and I definitely just felt something. You know, it was in a location I've never been, um, so you know that's a big that was a big intrigue and why I came up here. Um, but yeah, it kind of just fell into place. You know, you just kind of I just kind of blinked and I was here. Um, just happened. <laughs> yeah, with a, with a lot of help though. Yeah. So you are so far away from your family. A little bit before the interview, we were talking about um, your mom being able to come see you, but she hasn't really seen you actually play a lot. So kind of tell us a little bit about your yeah. parents coming up and seeing you, or your mother and your brother. Yeah, well, every time my family, whether it was my mom, whether it was my mom and brother, came up, the game before they came to see, I would get injured. Um, freshman year, I actually didn't really play too much, so they just didn't see me then. Sophomore year is literally the weekend. That Sunday before the Friday game they were supposed to see me play in, I did my shoulder in. Um, so they missed that game. Um, and then last year uh, I suffered a knee injury against Monmouth. And literally that Sunday, I think it was a Friday night game, and then the Sunday they were coming to see me play um, was was the next game after the injury. So it kind of – it's been kind of funny. I, I – I, I guess you have to take it with a sense of humor because if I just sit here and sulk, then I'm probably gonna—I don't even know—I'll probably be in the dark corner or something. But it's—it's—it was—it just made that moment 
even more special when she finally came and saw me play um, this year when she actually saw me playing live and not on you know a computer screen or a TV screen so um, it was great to see her and I'm glad I was able to get that shut out and uh, we were able to pull that win off so against Lafayette and then she came back for senior day which was amazing and that's when my brother actually first saw me he was okay. here um, for the first game because he had school but this time he was able to come up so it was great to see for him to see as well um, you know what I've dedicated my life to and and once again to get that shut out and to get that win was amazing especially on senior day as well but to have it for them and to show them you know this is what what I do up here you know was fantastic and then hopefully we'll see if she makes it up for any of the games for playoffs and whatnot so Friday maybe not but if we make it to Sunday it might be a possibility and that'd be that'd be awesome that'd be amazing so yeah so a funny, interesting story, yeah. It finally <laughs> happened, and there's yeah, that's great. No more, no more hexes or anything like that. <laughs> well, don't get hurt. I know. Yeah. Knows if, if right, you knock on wood, but then there's a good desk here. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess my last question for you is, you know, we've talked to a couple goalies this year on the men's soccer side, and they talk mm -hmm. a lot about their pregame rituals. What is the one thing, or I guess a couple things, uh. sure that you do this weekend to make sure that you guys come out on top? Oh gosh. Um. Well, I guess it depends on the game. Like this past game, I really focused and zoned out um, to some music. But my team, um, we always we dance. I don't even know how to <laughs> describe it or anything. It's just you know we just play our play our music and we just sing and dance. It's it kind of sounds like dainty and whatnot, but oh, it, it's it's an interesting ritual. I wouldn't say there's a set ritual. We just kind of go. With uh, the music changes every week, so we just do whatever. And I definitely get a couple, couple moves in there. Uh, I guess you could say more than a couple if you ask any of the other teammates. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, I don't even know how to explain what our pregame is. And we sit there quietly. Then all of a sudden, somebody puts music on, and then I don't know, just people let go. <laughs> it's, it's a show. It's a show. Well, maybe we'll catch a glimpse of that. This <laughs> we'll maybe bring some of the front row cameras in. To I see. know, right? <laughs> We're singing, and all of a sudden, the live expo <laughs> on camera, FDU women's soccer dancing. <laughs> That'll be great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. That's had a lot of fun. Hopefully, I will see you this weekend. Yeah, we'll see you in talk. person. <laughs> um, but Fairly Dickinson will take on LIU Brooklyn this weekend. First game is Friday, the semifinals. Will be at 2:30, depending on uh, if any the first game goes into overtime. Um, but 2:30, make sure you tune in to NEC Front Row. We will also be live tweeting the whole weekend using hashtag NEC WSOC, so NEC Women's Soccer. So please, we love to see you all. Come out to Loretto, um, Sage. Thank you so much, and it's been an awesome meeting you. It's awesome. Yeah, it's been a good talk. All right, I'm Erin B, and this has been another NEC Google Hangout.